Hello, now we are going to start our first hands-on lab of CloudFront. Here, we are going to understand how CloudFront is actually working. We are going to understand that what will be the difference if you are going to host your website without CloudFront and with CloudFront. To understand this whole concept, we have divided this video into the three chapters. We are going to start with the chapter number one, mission statement. Our mission is to set up CloudFront a content delivery network. So, in this hands-on lab, we will take step-by-step -step approach to learn and set up the fast and scalable content delivery network using CloudFront. Our mission is to gain practical experience by completing two main tasks. First, host static website, which will be our origin, and then we will create CloudFront distribution. Here, you will literally understand that what will happen or how your website will perform if you are not using CloudFront. So we will test our website with CloudFront and without CloudFront. By the end of this lab, participants will have good understanding of how to host static website on S3 and distribute it globally using CloudFront, making it more available and faster for the users. So now, let's start this mission and as a part of this mission, we are going to start our chapter number two, task one, static website hosting. To host static website, we are going to create S3 bucket. So right now, I am inside my AWS console. I am going to the S3 and this time, I am going to host my website into the N Virginia. Okay, so I am going to click selected and Virginia here and I'm going to create bucket here I'm going to give name let's say that cloud fox web I'm just going to leave all these options default let's click on create bucket now I have my bucket ready what about my website so I have my website here in my local computer because we want to verify video performance and, and we want to verify some pictures as well. So in this website, I have one video and one uh, PNG file. And the main page, of course, it is index.html. Now I can upload all these three files together, but I don't want to do this because I have to add some modification here in the index.html file. So I'm going to upload these two files first. Okay. Then I will get URL of these files and then I will edit this with the index.html. Don't worry about this. Let's start the process. So first of all, going to the S3 bucket. Here I am going to click on upload and add files. This is my website. I have this website uh, stored in my local system. It is folder F, a F drive, CloudFront demo website. Now, as I explain you, I'm going to upload these two files. Now, these files are actually large files, so it will take some time. So, let's click on upload. Now, it is uploading. It may take 2 to 3 minutes. I will come back once the file will be uploaded. Okay, both files are now uploaded. So, I'm going to click on close. Now, I want to update object URL of these files into the index.html. So what I'm doing, I'm going to open index.html using any HTML editor. I have Visual Studio Code, so I'm going to use this. Now in this code, if you scroll down, you will find out these two locations. Here I have location of my intro.mp4. So what I'm doing, going to the intro.mp4. Here I got this object URL. I'm going to copy this. And in this file, I'm going to upload this. Yes. Here I have wallpaper. So, let's go to the wallpaper.png. Copy object URL. And now, you can paste it here. That I'm doing all this in front of you. Why? Because you guys can perform same lab. Otherwise, what happened? I have everything ready. 
you don't know how to change the path and at the end you are not able to open the website. I don't want this. I want you to perform lab with me. So that's why I'm just making all the changes in front of you. So let's click on save. Now, file has been saved. So now I can upload index.html. So let's click on upload, add files. And here I have index.html. And now I can say that my website is 100% uploaded into the AWS S3. So upload website files, it is done, enable static web hosting. In order to enable static web hosting, we can go to the properties, then scroll down. Here you will get static web hosting option, by default it is disabled. So let me click on enable and here I can specify name, index.html which will be my first page. So let's click on save changes. Then once you create this, you will get this S3 static web hosting URL. But it will not open website right now because we have to make it public. So you have to make bucket public, then anybody can open this. And in order to make your bucket public, you have to use this bucket policy. So what I'm doing, I'm going to copy this bucket policy. Now going to bucket, then go to the permission. Here you need to remove this block all public access because this option will not allow you to make any folder public, sorry, any bucket public. So I'm going to remove this. Save changes. I have to type confirm. Okay. Now scroll down. You will get this bucket policy. Click on edit and update bucket policy. Now here you just need to update bucket ARN. This is my bucket ARN. I'm just going to copy this. And here I'm going to paste this. Then not getting any error means everything is good. Now I can say that my bucket is public and all the content of the bucket is also public. So, yes, it is done. Now, we are going to access our website using bucket, the static web hosting URL. So, going to bucket. Here, I am going to the property. And here, I have this URL. Let's verify that are we able to get file website or not. I am going to paste this into the browser. And here, I am able to open this website. This is a sample website that I have created for our CloudFront training. And now here, if you look at this, I have video, I have some sample images as well. And throughout our journey, we are going to use this particular website. Now, here, uh, I'm going to verify performance of this website. Right now, we need to remember that we are just using normal S3 static web hosting, right? Here, I have one site which will provide you performance of your website. So what I'm doing, I'm going to open this website. Now, once you open this website, it will ask you to enter URL of your website. As we have this static website hosted URL, I'm going to copy this and pasting over here. Let me click on go and let's verify what is actually happening. See, it is going to open my website from the various location. If I'm opening this website from N Virginia, there is no latency. Why? Because website itself is hosted into the N Virginia. But if you look at this, if I'm going to open this website from Brazil, there is 113 MS latency. California, 62. Ireland, 72. And Australia, 200 MS latency. So yes, this website is actually performing well if you are going to open this from Virginia. But if you are going to open this from all other places like Brazil, Ireland, Australia, even from the California, you have some latency and you are getting the detail about this latency as well. So yes, website is actually hosted, but it is not performing well if we are actually opening from other remote place. I have one another website for the testing as well because we don't want to rely on one website. I'm going to open this web page test.org. Now here, it will also ask me for the URL. So let me copy this S3 URL and now let's See here, it is asking me that you have read the limit for this month because I already tested this. So no need to worry, we are not going to use this. But yes, if you have uh, options available, you can use this web page test.org. This is a website. Enter your URL and it will show you the detail about the website performance. Okay. So no problem. We are going to use this geo picker right now. It will provide us proper detail. So this is the performance of my website. And now, we want to improve performance. 
how we can improve this by creating our cloud front distribution so let's start our chapter number 3 task 2 create cloud front distribution now here to create cloud front distribution we are using our s3 static website as a origin as you know that you can use a uh, ec2 instance as a origin load balancer even if you have web server for your on premises infrastructure you can select any of this as as a origin of the cloud front distribution here i am going to use s3 web site or s3 web hosting static web hosting as a origin so let's start our process going to the cloud front when you go to the cloud front the first thing first is you need to create distribution so create new distribution from the cloud front console and we need to define origin let's create this so click on create cloud front distribution here we need to define origin now here it is showing me the bucket uh url i'm going to select this okay now as soon as you select your s3 bucket url it will tell you that this bucket having s3 static web hosting enabled so do you want to use website endpoint yes i am saying yes i want to use website endpoint means this s3 url it is a website endpoint that we are using as a cloud front origin okay we will discuss about all of this options no need to worry and i will create separate video about all of this option let's say that we have one specific video about default cache behavior we have specific video about uh, the settings what is this http2 and http3 and all this okay right now i want you to understand that how cloud front is actually working so i am not going to talk about each and every topic first of all i want you to the, want you to understand the things you you if you if you if you understand that how the process is actually working then it would be very easy for you to understand all these options right now you are actually confused about how we are going to open the website after completing the cloud front and all so i want to create cloud front distribution as soon as possible then we will talk about each and every options i am giving you promise that we will not left any particular option we will discuss each and every topic okay now here we have one point that we need to discuss right now it is origin path so we have origin domain name here we use our s3 endpoint and here we have origin path specifies the directory or path within your origin like s3 bucket from which the cloud front will retrieve your content this can be useful when you want to use a sub directory within your origin as a root of your cloud front distribution now see if you look at this s3 bucket okay in s3 bucket we have our website and our main root or home page is index.html now our website is directly hosted in this s3 bucket we don't have any folder in which we have website hosted our website is directly hosted on root of our s3 bucket so we do not need to specify any origin path let's suppose if i have one folder here let's say the test or let's say that web okay in and if i have index.html file inside web so specifically where is your index.html file so if your index.html file is inside web now in this case you have to specify origin path here you have to tell them that okay inside my bucket i have slash web folder and my index.html is inside this so you have to specify but right now we don't because our website is directly hosted on the root of our bucket so we don't need to specify this okay now we are not going to talk about any other option because it is kind of higher level overview i want you to understand the concept so i'm not going to talk about anything yes one thing that we need to understand that we don't want any security right now so we, do, we are not going to enable any security and we are going to uh cache the content of this s3 website to all over the world so use all age location as you know that aws having more than 400 age location so it is going to cache my content to all the 400 location here you can specify a particular location as well like use only north america and europe 
or use North America, Europe, Asia, Middle East and Africa. If you if you are aware about from which location users are going to open website and if you have a specific location, you should select any of this option. If you if you are so popular and everybody from all over the world opening your website, it is a good idea to go with this. But yes, it is directly associated with the cost as well. So right now, we just want to test this. So I'm going to use all the age locations. This things we will discuss definitely. Let's click on create distribution. Now, once you create your distribution, AWS CloudFront will provide you URL. And this is currently in deploying process. So here, if you look at this, we got this CloudFront URL. Now, in order to open your website and use CloudFront aid location, you have to use this URL. Right now, we have two URL. One, this URL. Let me go to the property. This is S3 endpoint URL. And the another one is CloudFront URL. If I'm going to use this URL, it means I am not using CloudFront age location. I'm not going to take advantage of CloudFront age location. If I'm going to use this URL, I'm going to take advantage of CloudFront age location and then all the age location will help me over here. My website will come from the nearby age location. Here, if you are seeing this, uh, this URL is actually provided by CloudFront. We can add our own URL. Let's say that I want to use my own cloudfoxhub.com, my own domain. We can do this. But step by step, we will definitely add these details as well. But right now, we just want to test out the CloudFront. So we are actually using this domain name to verify our CloudFront performance. Now, if you look at this, status is enabled. Last modify is deploying. Now, still it is deploying means we need to wait. It may, it may take 5 to 10 minutes. So once this deploying will be disappear from here, then we will test this. Okay. So yeah, wait. Sorry, sorry, I know that you want to watch full video, but full video is now not available on YouTube. If you want to watch full video, I want you to go to our website. When you will go to our website, you will find out our course 100 Days YouTube Challenge. I want you to enroll for this course by paying only 499 rupees for lifetime if you are from India. If you are from outside of India, you just need to pay 7 US dollar. Once you will enroll to this course, you are going to get all full videos over there on our portal. You are also going to get certificate after completing the course. And we have just uploaded 120 videos. We are going to upload another 120 videos as well. So there will be total 240 videos. I hope. We are going to meet inside the class. Thank you very much.